Hello everyone. This week's story is called as Granny Knits. This story was originally published in Hebrew a long, long time ago. And it's one of my favorite stories. It's about a grandmother who knits an entire world around herself. So watch and read along. Granny Knits Written by Uri Orlev Translated by Eddie Levenstein Illustrations by Ora Iten And published by National Book Trust, India One day Granny came to town and took a look around. One bag, a cane, that was about all and two knitting needles and yarn in a ball. She couldn't put her slippers in the dust. I'll knit a mat, indeed I must. So Granny knitted herself a rug and kept her slippers neat and snug. But where could her lovely mat be spread? Not on thorns and weeds, she said. So Granny took her needles clickety-click and knitted a floor. My, she was quick. I'll spread the mat on the floor, she said. But where will I lay my head? So she set to work yet again and came up with bed and counterpane. A sheet, a mattress, and she almost forgot in the corner a little pot. But she could never sleep, that's for certain, without a window and a curtain. Cliggity-click and Granny soon made a wall, a window and a lampshade. Beam by beam, wall by wall, she knitted a house, roof and all. But how will I ever get up without some tea in my favourite teacup? So she knitted a kettle, plates and a cake, then three little cups she decided to make. Because she knew that a home is a home only if you are not all alone. So Granny again started to knit. She knew what she wanted, what would fit. A labour of love, a work of art, a granddaughter and grandson, both very smart. Naughty, sad and funny, what a mixture, full of mischief and cute as a picture. Outside she knitted flowers and greenery, inside wooden doors and embroidery. The children played all sorts of games, like freeze and tag, you know the names. After knitting a green lawn with a trim, she knitted a room filled to the brim. Cupboards and shelves, every game, each toy, all of it for a happy girl and boy. The naughty children played for hours, picking threads of the knitted flowers. The boy grabbed his sister's right arm and pulled the thread to her great alarm. But then she caught him by the ear and began to unravel his rear. Granny wasn't one to worry. She took her needles without much flurry. She patched the arm, never mind, and knitted the boy a new behind. With black wool she knitted a winter's night, tucked them in, turned off the light. With them cozy in their beds, she took out her needles and also her threads. She knitted dreams, sweet and soft, light as cobwebs floating aloft. Next morning she knitted a book and took them to school to take a look. The teachers, well, they did laugh and scoff. Those kids are knitted, you'd best be off. We don't teach children made of wool. Take them away, the class is full. Granny said, this isn't right. They are lovely kids, so very bright. Don't be hasty. Don't despise them. Give them a chance. You'll come to prize them. They deserve to be admitted. It's not their fault they are knitted. The teachers probed and tested. 
just as granny had suggested then they sniffed children made of wool in our very own school these kids are hand knitted this cannot be permitted granny fumed but wouldn't quit she took her wool and began to knit a funny looking car with crooked doors and yellow yarn on woolen floors to the mayor's office she set out it wasn't fair there was no doubt the council met to hear the plea but came out with its own decree in any self respecting land knitted children must be banned they sent a wire to the powers that be and then went out for cake and tea surely this was illegality what a stupid municipality needles clicked and clicked at length using wool of double strength granny knitted a helicopter to meet the president nothing could stop her the president sighed the cabinet sat the children were asked this and that children made of wool and pearl can't possibly go to school the mayor and the teachers too they knew the right thing to do suddenly the little town knew fame that town with some silly name tourists came from near and far to stare at a house so bizarre the mayor and the council again debated what a gold mine they had created let's make it a protected site and have it guarded day and night they put up fences they put up rails to guard the flowers and the trails in the whole world you could not find a house so well designed but what good were fences and rail granny's wrath would prevail late at night when everyone dreamed she unraveled the house to the last seam the flowers the fence and the doors and of course the woolen floors all unraveled in a snap nothing left not even a flap needles clicked at a furious pace here she would never again show her face the cakes the cups bed and mat all disappeared in no time flat then when the house was all done she unraveled granddaughter and grandson she took her needles wool and cane and was never seen there again but she'll find a new place and knit at her special pace first her grandchildren boy and girl they laugh and play in a happy world granny will knit up everything required all that their hearts ever desired and if the people are caring and kind and knitted kids they won't mind then granny won't fret and there she'll sit and need i tell you knit and knit and knit so i hope you enjoyed uh, listening to the story of granny and i hope you noticed how it was a story but it was in the form of a poem so the activity that you have to do based on this story is that you have to think about your grandmother you have to draw a picture uh, of your grandmother and you have to write a poem about her so i tried to think of my granny and write a little poem for her uh watch and uh, listen to it here my granny my granny likes to sit in the sun have her morning coffee she likes to knit she loves to cook so much that she wrote a recipe book she has a swiss pen friend she loves to tell stories she loves to garden meet her friends and always wear pretty sarees She is always sprightly and always has a tasty treat for me with a smile on her face every time I see her a loving grandmother 
is she so now that you have an example uh, think about your grandmother and uh, write a poem about her it could be a small poem need not be a very long one it could be four lines eight lines 10 lines it could be a long one if you want it to be it's up to you uh, i look forward to receiving your poems uh, you know the email address as wordsworthworkshops at gmail.com i will look forward to your granny poems and until the next story stay safe take care